summer movie season is officially here. Very, very excited. Hello there, everybody. This is 22 Tiger Dude here, aka Tony, and welcome to our top five anticipated movies for summer of 2023. Yay. Oh, yeah. Yes. And of course, as usual, I do have me amigos right here to do this video with me. I'm very excited to have everyone in the bunch right here. I hope everyone is doing well. I'm very excited to get to our honorable mentions and see what everyone's five to number one are. And um, of course, before we get into the honorable mentions, we're going to go ahead and let everyone give their introductions one by one, starting off with Violet. Hello, 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 everybody. Uh, as always, Tony, thank you so much for having me on here. These are my favorite YouTube videos to do. Um, and so they're just really, really exciting to be back here again for it. Um, and, you know, th this summer movie season is one of the craziest summer movie seasons we have had in such a long time. Uh, and so there's just a lot of films to talk about and potential, like, you know, uh, rankings. So, yeah, I'm glad to be here. We're back. It's summertime once again. The big blockbuster movie season. And of course, your friends are back to tell us you know, what our top five is. So, yay! Woo! Next one up we got here is Brian Mendoza. I'm still trapped in Jesse. here. This is your fault. I lost the the, the uh, Oscars video. I'm trapped in here longer. Ah, oh, no, no, no. Oh, Damn, no, Battlefield no. Earth. No, not Battlefield Earth. No, <laughs> but all seriousness, I'm happy to be here. Uh, feels like 1989 again. Yep, the summer movie season. It's gonna be pretty crazy. So, yeah, I can't wait to share my anticipated film. So, yeah. <laughs> Next one up we got here is Andrew, aka the duck. Whack whack. Hello everybody. I'm here <laughs> not only to talk about uh uh my most anticipated movies of the summer movie season, but I'm gonna talk about how much of a bum ass team the Philadelphia 76ers are. So stay tuned. <laughs> <laughs> Next one up we got here is Jordan Farrell. And I'm glad to be back. You know, I'm here to uh, showcase my top five. I brought some special guest stars with me. Uh, if they'll behave, uh, I'll light a hammer down on anyone who, uh, I don't know, looks at me funny. But yeah, I'm looking forward to this. Uh, by the way, this hammer is sponsored by the, the most hotly anticipated movie of all time, Flaming Hot Cheetos, the movie. So, oh, well, my number one. <laughs> Wow. Yeah. Right, this is our sponsor. Our sponsor is Flaming Hot Cheetos. Do we have Flaming Hot Cheetos? No, because we fucking ate them. I don't know. Next one up we got here is Diego Coya. Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you, Tony, for having me on this video. I'm excited to talk about the summer movie season. I think this is going to be one of the best summer movie seasons we've had in a while. And I'm excited to share with you guys movies I'm looking forward to the most um, this summer. And we got Timothy Anderson. Hello, thank you for having me once again. And I think I'm going to go ahead and say that I think I'm more excited for Oppenheimer than Diego is. No, no, listen, I, I don't know about that. There, there's no way you're, no, you're there, there, there ain't no way. Diego, <laughs> no Diego, way. Told me, Diego told me he actually is more excited for a Barbie than Oppenheimer. <laughs> Oh. You know, that, that oh, yeah. oh yeah, oh yeah, I've heard word on the street about that. Oh yeah. Now between Don't you and me, Andrew, how dare you? He's actually gonna see Barbie in theaters, uh and not even see Oppenheimer. So that's what that's what he told me. I'm seeing Barbie in IMAX. And um we did have Adam Haskell here, but he's having internet issues, so I don't know how long his internet is gonna last. We'll see how it goes while we're doing the recording. <laughs> Sorry for the jarring edit right here, folks. Adam actually had internet connection issues on the night we were shooting the video. But obviously, because he was going to join us, I still want him to be a part of the video. So we are recording Adam's portion separately. But yeah, here is Adam. Thank you for joining this video, Adam. Uh, I know it's been a few years uh, since you've done one of these, but I'm very excited to uh, have you on, my man. 
Yeah, I'm excited to be on. So, yeah. <laughs> 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 Ooh, yeah. Whoa. Okay, everyone. Of course, it is that time where we get into our honorable mentions. And, um, you know, with these videos lately, I haven't had like a ton of honorable mentions. I would have like maybe at best, like maybe three or two, but not like a whole lot. Uh, for what I see right here, I have maybe like about 12 or 13. So that's the most honorable mentions I've had in a long, long time. Uh, but starting off here, we got Fast X. I hope that's a fun time. Uh, Nimona, which I'm very happy Netflix is finishing of what could have been Blue Sky's last movie. But, you know, Disney. Uh, Past Lives. That looks really, really good. Uh, Blue Beetle. Uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Mutant Mayhem. Ruby Gilman Teenage Kraken. Uh, no Hard Feelings. That one looks really, really funny to me. Extraction 2, Elemental, Strays, Spider-Man, Across the Spider-Verse, Still, A Michael J. Fox Story. I'm really, really looking forward to that one. And then just missing my top five is Transformers Rise of the Beast. I am really, really excited for that one. Oh my god, my mic was off. I'm so, so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty, here we go. Here we go. Okay, so the first one I'm going to mention, because I, I have quite a few honorable mentions. Uh, the first one I'm going to mention, as far as I'm aware, I know Jordan would know this, this is not coming out in the States this summer, but I just want to give it a shout out just in the very slim chance it does, because if it did come out, it'd be like my number two or three. And that is How Do You Live? Again, it's very likely not coming out this, this summer in the States. But if it does, like, you know, just shout out to that. Uh, so to the ones that are confirmed to come out in the States, um, I actually do have them, like, ordered. So, like, the last one, you know, what I mentioned last is what I'm most excited for. So let's get into it. Okay, so uh, my normal mentions are The Boogeyman, Joyride, Strays, The Meg 2, woo, um, woo. The Little Mermaid. I'm still hoping it's good. Um, except for Haley Bailey, you know, even if the film is not great. Um, Blue Beetle, Asteroid City, Elemental, Talk to Me, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Mutant Mayhem, The Flash, and then the one that was the closest to making my list but didn't is the film Past Lives. And that are my honorable mentions. Alrighty. My honorable mentions are Blue Beetle, Fast X, Fool's Paradise. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Mutant Mayhem, Elemental, Past Lives, Mission Impossible, Dead Reckoning Part 1, The Flash, and the one that was very close to making my list but just missed it is a movie that has a confirmed release date this time, Asteroid City. Jeez, I think this is the most horrible adventures I've done. So I have Nimona, Blue Beetle, the Flash, The Boogeyman, not starring John Wick, The Little Mermaid, TMNT, Mutant Mayhem, Elemental, Transformers Rise of the Beast, which should have been a musical, by the way, uh, Asteroid yes. City, Extraction 2, Grand Trismo, Barbie, and my last honorable mention is Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny. I don't have any honorable mentions, but I just want to mention Book Club, the next chapter, just because I can. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yes. <laughs> All right. Let me just upload my honorable mentions list. All right. So <clears throat> for honorable mentions, there's Fast X, The Little Mermaid, and hey, what the fuck? Hey there, I'm Goofy, and I'm here to to say y'all motherfuckers better have the Little Mermaid on your top fives, especially you, Brian. I don't have it in my top five. I already said it. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, sorry. I'm I'm gonna sorry Goofy. That. I'm gonna so yuck you up. I'm sorry to break what it to you, Goofy, Goofy, but the Little Mermaid is not even in my honorable mentions. So, what the yuck is wrong with you? <laughs> Wow. <laughs> what the actual 
Get the fuck out of here, Goofy. <laughs> anyway. Crazy Goofy. While I was rudely interrupted, The Little Mermaid, Transformers Rise of the Beast, Strays, the fl- what the fuck? Hey! Hey, hey. I'm Batman. You're a bird dad. No, I'm Batman. You stupid <laughs> fuck. You wanna get nuts? Let's get nuts. I'd better see the flash on any of your top fives. It's too bad. It's not highest. It? It's gonna be once again, not a, once again, not in my honorable mentions, Batman. Sorry. Why? Nope. Why? Warner Brothers spent a fuckload of money. They spent their life savings on this movie. Correction, Birdman. What in the California air is bringing Jordan's toys to life? <laughs> <laughs> so there's the Flash, Elemental. No hard feelings. I'm glad we're getting Raunchy Comedies back. So thank you for mentioning that, Tony. Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny. Ruby Gilman, Teenage Kraken. Barbie. Haunted Mansion. Gran Turismo, Neil Blomkamp's big uh, comeback. Blue Beetle. And White Bird, which is the sequel slash prequel slash companion piece to Wonder. Starring Owen Wilson. So I only have one honorable mention. Talk to me. Uh, the new A24 horror film that's coming out. That looks very intriguing. So um, that's my honorable mention. Fuck, it's my turn. Okay. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> uh... Wow. Stay hydrated. Yeah, stay hydrated, people. Always the most prepared person. Look, okay, I had a little bit to drink tonight. I'm just making sure I'm hydrated. Uh, so I got Insidious, The Red Door, uh, Rudy Gilman, Teenage Kraken, Meg to the Trenches, whenever the fuck that trailer's coming out, it's going to be nice, uh, Blue Beetle, The Last Voyage of the Dementor, Dem- Dem- Demeter, Dem- 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 Demeter, yeah, Harry Potter, <laughs> Gran Turismo, Love Me Some Neil Blomkamp, Haunted Mansion, Asteroid City, The Flash, sorry, Jordan, I mean, Batman, <laughs> uh, Elementals, The Boogeyman. I think I'm the only one here that actually wants to see that. Barbie, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Mutant Mayhem, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume Three. That's only on here because I'm seeing it in two days at the time of the recording. <laughs> no Hard Feelings, Strays, Fast X, Flame and Hot. I'm not kidding. And The Little Mermaid. All right. My honorable mentions in no particular order are Talk to Me, Oppenheimer, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Mutant Mayhem, Barbie, Haunted Mansion, No Hard Feelings, Asteroid City, and Elemental. Okay, everybody. Now that we've got our honorable mentions out of the way, we're going to go ahead and get into our number five. Ooh. Five dollar foot long once again. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Good play, Tony. Good play. I knew Brian was gonna get a laugh out of that. So kicking off my number five, I legitimately can't wait, and it is Barbie. Yes, Barbie is in my top five most anticipated. That is crazy to say. Although, if you know the history of Little Boy Tony, it shouldn't be surprising because when I was a little boy, I actually did watch a lot of Barbie movies. I was into those Barbie animated movies. Um, so I could definitely tell you I was definitely not ashamed of watching, like, girly you know, movies at that time. Uh, so I'm sure little boy Tony probably would have been happy about this. But yeah, um, I think the idea looks definitely something fresh for um, this material. Um, I think the production design looks excellent. Uh, I think it looks like it's going to have some of the more stronger production designs of this year, to be honest. Uh, cinematography is super colorful. Um, like, wow. Um, it's really vivid and bright. And I just love the atmosphere that was built upon that. And of course the cast is great too. Uh, Margot Robbie, perfect, perfect casting as Barbie. I can't really imagine anyone else to play this role right now. I do think Margot was like the perfect choice. And of course, Ryan Gosling as Ken. 
Uh, that's just so awesome right there. I can't wait to see how he and uh, Barbie, their interactions are going to go with each other. And everyone else, like from Michael Cera, um, Alexander Ship, we got Will Ferrell, uh, we got John Cena. The cast is so big, I honestly can't name all of them to you. But like, yeah, it's a stacked cast regardless. And Greta Gerwig is a very talented uh, director, and she's actually writing this movie with her husband, Noah Baumbach, which is yeah, very interesting. Wait, what? I mean, they're not married. They're they're still uh, they're they're getting married. Oh, oh, okay. Thank you, Timothy. Thank you. Yeah. Dun, well, dun, you know, they're, dun, they're, dun, they're dun. well, they're together. So, but yeah, they they're writing this movie together, which I think is really cool. And um, yeah, it's just a movie that I think has a lot of potential to be something fun, funny. I know there's going to be a commentary. Um, involving society with the movie too so i'm looking forward to seeing that i definitely think it has the makings to be one of the most entertaining movies of the summer and of the year in general in my opinion um that's it is my number five barbie let's go Ooh, my number five is also barbie yeah. Ooh, i'm a barbie yeah. girl in a yeah, barbie yeah. literally world. literally um so yeah so i cannot wait for this film obviously like i think barbie's cool like i don't obviously i think it's cool um and i am just really really excited to see this because i from everything that we've heard about it it seems like it's gonna be very like fun very colorful very like you know just fun little film but also it's gonna deal with like a lot of like very interesting commentary especially on like like body image issues and just like uh like gender dynamics and stuff like that and I, i'm really really into that kind of commentary um especially when you can get like like subvert audience expectations with it or do something interesting with it like this film is going to do uh and uh just you know greta gerwig i just i love like Lady Bird is absolutely incredible and then little women i i like that movie even more that was one of my favorite films of 2019 uh so just to see her back with such like a, a large film uh, her biggest in scope yet with such an incredible cast i'm just really so so excited and that is why barbie is my number five all right my number five is a number five as it is indiana jones and the dial of destiny it's been 15 years since kingdom of the crystal skull which what the fuck oh fuck <laughs> yeah, literally this month <laughs> Yeah, no way. But, yeah. I know, like, the general consensus, and I agree with this, is that that one wasn't as good as the first three, but I still oh, liked funny. it. And this one looks like it is going to bring back the magic of those first three with crazy looking action. Harrison Ford proving he's still got it all these years later. And we got. Mads Mikkelsen always making a fantastic villain here once again. And Phoebe Waller Bridge is in here as well as Indiana Jones's goddaughter, which I think is great casting. So yeah, this is gonna kick ass. James Mangold taking the reins, and I think it's gonna be a lot of fun. My number five, I am genuinely excited for this movie. Uh, my number five is Fast X. Um, I've been a fan of this franchise since I was really young, uh, beginning with Too Fast, Too Furious. Um, I didn't really watch these movies in order, to be honest with you, but yeah, I had a blast the last one, and um, this movie looks like a lot of fun. Uh, Jason Momoa is the villain, um, and I just don't know what they're going to do with this movie. Like, How's this movie going to end? Is there going to be like and Fanny Gauntlet? I don't know. Um, but yeah, I'm excited for a, a two-parter fast movie. Uh, it looks like a fun time, you know? Um, popcorn, you know, your drink, and sit back and see all this crazy stuff happen on screen. So yeah, Fast X, number five. I'm number five, <laughs> Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny. Um, the trailer is awesome. Uh, I agree with Henry. It feels like it has that vibe of the first three. I'm a, I'm a huge fan of the first three. Uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark is one of my favorite movies of all time. And James Van Gold is uh, a sexy motherfucker. Uh, he, if, if anybody was going to do another Indiana Jones movie that wasn't Steven Spielberg, it'd probably be James Van Gold. I have uh, all the faith in him. And uh, 
Yeah, no, it looks awesome. Gonna be one hell of a time. All right, so for my number five, I like to say it's Book Club, the next chapter. Uh, I'm just kidding. Uh, it's actually Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3, and what the fuck? That's also my number five. Shh, get the fuck out of here, boo. <laughs> but yeah, I. it's weird to think that um, we're at the final chapter of these characters, like the end of this trilogy, uh, not counting the the Christmas special and to think that I was like 13 years old when the first guardians of the galaxy trailer came out, like the very first one and no one had any clue who the fuck these characters were. Everyone was like, what the fuck a talking raccoon, a talking tree who just says one thing all the time. What the fuck is this? Then the movie came out and I was turning 14 and then it just blew the fuck up. Like, and then Guardians Volume 2 comes out, and I it was just when I was graduating high school. I was about to turn 18 that year. Was it? Yeah, it was 2017 when it came out. Uh, and now, here we are. I'm an adult. I've graduated college uh, last year. So, in my now adult life, I get to witness the end of the, the these characters. And uh, witness the end of James Gunn's time at, at Marvel, where he'll hopefully do good at DC, which I'm pretty sure he would. He will. My number five is Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny. Um, Andrew and Henry uh, did a good job covering it, but I am very excited for this movie. I am a huge fan of the first three films. I haven't seen the fourth one since theaters, but I remember it being okay. I'm going to rewatch all of them before this new one comes out. But I thought the trailers were great. Uh, Matt Mickelson, he's such a great actor. Um, I am really hoping that this franchise will end in a great way with this film. And uh, I trust in James Mangold because he did such a great job with Logan in my opinion, and I think he can do um, another great job with this franchise. And uh, I guess just one thing that I'll add before um, I'll let Timothy go is that I think Steven Spielberg actually said he watched uh, this Indiana Jones movie and he said it was fantastic. So, um, you know, that alone, I think, solidifies my excitement for Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny. And for those reasons, it is my number five. Okay, so... My number five is also Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny. I'm very excited for this movie. Like uh, Diego and uh, whoever else said it, it's up there, said um, I'm a huge fan of the original three movies. I'm not that big into Kingdom of the Crystal Skull, but um, Raiders of the Lost Ark is in my top five movies of all time. Uh, I legitimately remember counting down the days until we finally got the 4K releases for these movies, and I literally bought it or pre-ordered it. Um, Temple of Doom is also really good, too, in my opinion, but uh, I'm, I'm absolutely excited to see where James Mangle takes this, and uh, it's going to be sad hearing John Williams compose the score for the... compose what could be one of his last scores as well. Um, but yeah, no, that's my number five. All right. My number five is strays. Um, <laughs> now when I saw the trailer for this movie, I thought it was just going to be like a kid's movie, like something in the vein of Marmaduke or something. Um, <laughs> but then they all started swearing and stuff and yeah, um, it looks really funny. I'm happy that it's coming to theaters because so many comedies these days, you know, just come to streaming. So, yeah, I really love the cast. Um, I'm surprised the Seth Rogen crew are involved, though. It seems like something they would do. But, yeah, still, it looks really funny. I hope it's good. Um, I know Phil Lord and Chris Miller are involved in some way, so that's cool. Uh, so, yeah, strays. Okay, everyone. Now we're going to go ahead and get into our number four. <laughs> my number four is indeed indiana jones and the dial of destiny i am very very excited for this it's very exciting that this is harrison ford's final 
Indiana Jones film, and I definitely hope that it could be something that's really good and something worthwhile and very memorable and just overall satisfying for the franchise. I think Harrison Ford as Indiana Jones is definitely like one of the most iconic movie roles ever. Um, there's literally no one else I could ever see play Indiana Jones. Harrison Ford is just so good as this character. For the franchise itself, uh, I mostly really like a lot of this franchise. The only one I don't like is the installment that you're not thinking. Um, it's actually The Last Crusade. I'm not big on The Last Crusade, to be honest. I know I'm in the world with that. Last Crusade, it just doesn't do anything for me. But I love Raiders. Um, that's one of my favorite movies ever. I have a lot of fun with Temple. And yes, I like Crystal Skull. I, I don't hate that movie at all. I personally think that's a lot of fun. This one definitely looks like it's giving me more of the Raiders feel. Like, just judging from the cinematography and the filmmaking, I'm definitely getting more than anything a Raiders vibe from the movie, which is very exciting. Yeah, just like I said, I'm excited to see Harrison Ford back, but I'm also looking forward to seeing uh, Phoebe Waller-Bridges to be in this too and see how she interacts with Harrison. I know Antonio Banderas is also in this for a smaller part which I think is really cool. And, um, you know, like what everyone has said, James Mangold is a very, very talented director, a director that I don't think gets enough talk or enough credit, even though I do think he deserves to have more talk because when you look at his filmography, it's honestly amazing the variety that he has. But yeah, uh, for what I see, it looks like he's really capturing the Spielberg magic of this franchise. And, you know, like what Diego said, Steven Spielberg commented about the movie. And I know, to be fair, Spielberg is a producer on this movie. So, you know, when you're a producer, you know, you could say good things. But I do trust that it's a really good movie. Movie. Um, and yeah, I just can't wait to see this movie and just see how everything unfolds here. And I just hope it gives this franchise the closure that it needs. So I hope it's one of the most fun blockbusters of the summer. And that is why Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny is my number four. I quickly would like to say I somehow forgot about Indiana Jones. It's an, It would not be in my top five, but it definitely is my honorable mention just because I used to love that franchise. All righty. My number four. This one might surprise some people, but my number four is Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. Um, I am still very, very, very excited for this film. Um, it's one of the most anticipated superhero films and comic films, whatever you want to call it, of all time. I love James Gunn so much. And Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 is very much up there for like my favorite MCU film. It's one of the most like emotional films for me, honestly. Um, and it's one of the first films that made me ever cry. And just like, I love these characters in this world and just so much. And just seeing it all come to an end, I know it's going to be very emotional. And uh, yeah, no, I'm just really, really excited to see it and just go on one last adventure. And uh, yeah, that's best my number four. Hello, welcome back. My number four is the movie that's going to blow up the theater. Oppenheimer. <laughs> God, I hope not. Oh, yeah. no. <laughs> it. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's in July. Yeah. Christopher Nolan, I think, is a great director, and his last World War II movie was Dunkirk, which was great, and this one looks great as well. Like, I think Killian Murphy is great casting as Robert Oppenheimer, and a lot of other people in the cast as well were great, like Emily Blunt, Matt Damon, Florence Pugh, Benny Safdie, Josh Peck, Jack Quaid. This is Robert Downey Jr.'s follow-up to the masterpiece Doolittle, so... <laughs> <laughs> Same studio as well. Yeah, that's true. But yeah, this I think it's gonna look and sound great in IMAX, so I'm excited to walk in only for them to play Barbie instead. Ah. <laughs> My number four is a movie I would love to watch this weekend, but I have to wait till next weekend, so um, it's Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. Uh, I've been a big fan of these characters since that first movie. Uh, I would say this is like this generation Star Wars, pretty much. It gives me a lot of that Flash Gordon vibe as well. Uh, I love what James Gunn has created uh, with this side of the MCU since 2014, and 
I'm not ready for this movie. Yet. Like, I'm gonna need these issues. Like, last movie made me cry. Not ready to say goodbye to these characters, pretty much what I'm saying. So, can't wait to watch it soon next week. So, yeah, Guardians Volume 3, part number four. My number four is Mission Impossible. Um, yeah, no, uh, I love the franchise. Uh, probably one of the best action franchises, not only going today, but ever. Uh, it, other than, uh, obviously, the second one is just consistently great, and I feel like each time it gets better and better, and, you know, the last one one of my favorite action movies of the past decade. Uh, gonna be awesome. Can't wait. Just letting you know, my number four, three, two, and one is The Flash. Now back to Jordan. All right. So my number four is Knights of the Zodiac. You know, like it's it's this it's another live action anime movie that's based on a very popular IP that totally isn't, you know, catered to a grandpa generation, you know, like it's totally going to outperform guardians three and fast X, you know, it's like, it's the underdog I'm rooting for it. I'm just fucking with you. No, my f number four is actually asteroid city. Uh, I've been a big fan of Wes Anderson ever since I discovered him when I was like a, a cinephile teenager back in high school uh i have like i think three of his movies like royal tenenbaums grand budapest hotel and fantastic mr fox i don't have his other filmography i wish i did but i'm hyped for it i'm hyped for his whimsical dialogue his dry humor his trippy colorful visuals and a story that might unintentionally make me cry so that's my number four Your mic is muted. Your mic is muted, Diego. <laughs> <laughs> That's awkward. Um, okay, so um, <laughs> my number four is Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. So I'm um, seeing this movie in, on Friday in IMAX. I'm very, very excited. Um, I love the first one. I think the first one is one of the best movies of the MCU. The second one, in my opinion, is not on the same level, but I do like it a lot. I would actually say it's one of the most underrated films of the MCU. And... Um, I'm really excited for this movie, despite the fact that uh, the MCU lately has not really impressed me. I, for me, the last film that um, blew my mind from the MCU is Spider-Man No Way Home. But since then, uh, every movie or TV show after that has, has either been, you know, fine or just like, you know, whatever. But with this movie, I do have high expectations. Um, the reviews have been great. And I do trust James Gunn. I love, uh, you know, what he's done with this franchise and, you know, with the Suicide Squad, so I do trust him uh, to really close this fran uh, this trilogy uh, in a great way, and I, I love the characters, and I think it's going to be a really emotional journey. So, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume Three is my number four. All right, so my number four is going to be Spider Man Across the Universe. Uh, across the <laughs> Spider Man, the Beatles. It uh, sort of came out around the same time as Spider-Man. <laughs> I'm a huge Spider-Man fan. I actually have a poster for the other another Spider-Man 2 um, that also coincidentally came out in June, 19 years ago. But um, I'm a huge fan of the character, and I loved um, Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse quite a bit. It's one of my favorite animated movies of all time and probably my second favorite Spider-Man movie other than Spider-Man 2. Um, so I'm really excited to see this. And with the recent news that it could potentially be two hours and 20 minutes long, I, I just, I'm, I'm so excited to see just this universe expand and just take a unique direction with Spider-Man characters in the story and I, i'm just so excited i'm also so excited to hear the soundtrack too um so yeah my number four is spider-man all right my number four is mission impossible dead reckoning part one um 
Now, as of uh, this taping, it's only been like a teaser for this movie, so there's not really a whole ton to say other than I, I really like the last one um, a lot, and uh, it looks like this one is going to be really action-packed, you know, has Tom Cruise, who's always amazing, and yeah, I'm curious to see like how much bigger they're going to get. I'm sure it'll be hard to top the bigness of the last one, but uh yeah, it looks like they're gonna have like a train scene in this, and that looks cool. And yeah, uh, so yeah. Okay, everyone. Now we're gonna go ahead and get into our number three. Three glasses. Oh. Yo, the timing of that, Henry. <laughs> <laughs> what? My number three is Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part One. Yeah, this is a two parter uh, in the Mission Impossible franchise, which is really exciting. Um, this movie is going to be my birthday movie for this year. Um, I know originally it was supposed to come out like in the last week of July. And then I guess it became like my birthday movie, I think a couple months ago. And then it's just, they just recently are going to have it now come out two days earlier. So instead of July 14th, now it's going to be July 12th. Uh, my birthday's on the 13th. So that's like awesome right there for me. Um, and yeah, I think this movie just looks super awesome. I am a big fan of a majority of the franchise. I would say starting with the third one, I've really become like such a fan of the franchise. And it's just amazing what they're able to do with like the action sequences, the scale of everything, the different settings for each installment is impressive. And of course, the reason why people mainly go to these movies, Tom Cruise just being an absolute madman. Like, respect to him, of course, but like, dude, you gotta calm down. Like, it's <laughs> insane what this guy does. Um, and of course, this is like, no different right here. But, um, but yeah, I do admire the man for respecting the craft of uh, cinema, the practical stunts, doing it the old-fashioned way. So regardless if I get anxiety of him hurting himself or not, <laughs> um, yeah, I, I'm definitely looking forward to see what he'll do. And of course, I'm looking forward to seeing everyone else in the cast from Simon Pegg to Ving Rhames to Rebecca Ferguson. Um, oh yeah, and Haley Atwell is a newcomer for this, so that's exciting too. Um, cinematography looks gorgeous. Christopher McQuarrie's direction looks spectacular. And yeah, it just looks like it's going to be a truly like heart pounding and thrilling ride. The surprising thing about this, the marketing for this movie is we had the teaser trailer last year, but they really haven't dropped another trailer since. Um, not that they need to anyways, because there's already a lot of hype surrounding this movie, but it's just interesting to me that uh, as of recording this video, the teaser trailer is like the only one we've got in, and that came out last year. I hope it'll be a really good birthday present for me this year, and that is why Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 1 is my number three. All righty, all righty. It's really funny because my number three is also Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part Woo! 1. Let's go. Yeah, yeah, I know. Um, so Mission Impossible Fallout is one of the best movies of all time, in my opinion. Uh, so just the fact that it's like, you know, a follow up to that specific one, I'm very, very excited to see it. But just in general, the, the Mission Impossible franchise is, is one of the most like creative and invigorating and just like so just heart pounding action franchises of all time. Um, I think each one just has such like a unique like feel to them and that's so like refreshing and like action franchise as I feel and just like filmmaking like in general. Uh, and I, I just say as usual, like I love the cast in these films. I love the atmosphere they create and I just love like just some of the you know, like, sensibilities about them. And uh, yeah, I obviously cannot wait for this one. And I, and I am with you, uh, you know, Tony, like it is interesting that we've only gotten that teaser trailer. Uh, so hopefully we get another trailer very, very soon, I hope. Uh, Especially and... considering because we're two months away from it too. <laughs> yeah, you yeah, know, totally, totally. So, uh, yeah, but hopefully soon. But I'm still very, very excited for it. That's why it's my number three. Okay, my number three is the movie that's going to save cinema, Barbie Baby. Woo! Barbie Whoa. Sweet. Woo. Yes. <gasps> yeah, besides... Oscars for Barbie. Are we riot? Hell yeah. I know that... Film Twitter has been obsessing over this movie, but besides that, I think that it looks this movie looks self-aware and fun as hell. 
Margot Robbie and Ryan Gosling are two of my favorite actors working today, and they look awesome in this. They're perfect casting. Like, I heard someone say that Ryan Gosling's performance is Oscar worthy, so that's hype. But also in the cast, we have like Will Ferrell, Michael Sarah. Helen Mirren, Dua Lipa, and John fucking Cena. Incredible. <laughs> just incredible. Greta Gerwig's directorial filmography has been great so far with Lady Bird and Little Women and now this. And I think that she and Noah Baumbach are great writers and they're a great duo. So I think that this is going to be a good summer movie. So my number three is not the part what you're thinking of. Um, it's my most anticipated animated film of the year and my most anticipated superhero movie of the year. So that is, of course, Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse. Uh, first movie is in my top five animated movies of all time. I was a big fan of that movie. Like, that soundtrack is just one of my favorites to listen while I work out. Um the way they're doing this story is ambitious and bigger than the last one. Like, um, it looks really intense as well, and it looks like it's going to be another emotional movie that's going to make me cry. Um, I, I I have no idea how this one's going to end, considering it's a part <clears throat> one. And, um, yeah, I guess we're all not ready for that big foot banger. So, yeah, that is my number three. My number three... Is Guardians of the Galaxy Volume Three? Um, I, I think you know the MCU has been pretty mid lately, but despite that, uh, I'm still pretty excited for this one. You know, Jay has gone. Um, is a is an awesome director. Um, and you know, despite like what's kind of gone on with him directing this film, uh, I'm glad that he was able to you know get it done. And you know, just uh, I'm so attached to like these characters. Um, arguably, probably, maybe my favorite movies in the MCU. Uh, but uh, yeah, it looks. Uh, I really hope Crockett doesn't die because that would be sad. But oh, uh, no. it looks awesome. I'll gladly kill Rocket in his sleep. Goofy, no! Anyway, my number four was Little Murray. My number three is Elemental. My number two is Haunted Mansion. And my number one is a Goofy movie. What? Get him out of here. All right. Uh, my... <laughs> my computer is acting up. Uh, let's see. My number three is actually White Men Can't Jump, you know? Like I'm, I'm happy to see white men finally get represented on a film. You know, I know my homeboys Ben Shapiro and Stephen Crowder are hyped for this movie. You know, sure it's a remake of a, of a Woody Harrelson movie, but who cares? We need white representation. I'm just playing with you. Uh, right. My real number three is actually Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles: Mutant Mayhem. I, I said the full title. <laughs> um. When I first heard about Seth Rogen producing a Ninja Turtles movie, I was like, mm, I don't know. Then I heard that one of the directors of <laughs> Michelle's Versus the Machines was going to direct it. I was like, oh, okay. And then I heard it was going to go for an ambitious animation style like Spider-Verse, and it was going to go for a, more of a, an ambitious coming-of-age story. Then the art the concept art got leaked, and I'm like, oh, this looks dope as fuck. And then the trailer came out, and I'm just like, "Oh, I'm fucking hyped for this!" Like, here's the thing: if I'm not a big Scooby Doo fan, if I'm not a big Gremlins fan, if I'm not a big Spider Man fan, which I am a huge Spider Man fan, I'm a big Ninja Turtles fan. You know, like I I grew up with those uh, four Renaissance artists like my whole life. You know, I love the '90s movie. I like Secret of the Ooze. We're gonna skip Ninja Turtles three. Uh, I think TMNT is one of the most underrated animated movies of all time and a movie that was ahead of its time as well. Uh, Michael Bay's Ninja Turtles, eh, the first one, eh. Out of the Shadows, I didn't mind that much. Um, I, I, I like just about all the Ninja Turtles shows, you know, including Rise, which I know some people don't like. 
But no, I'm hyped for this. You know, I'm hyped for like actual teenagers voicing the turtles, you know, because we haven't really explored as much of the turtles origins in film before, maybe in TV, but not in film before. I'm even hyped to see this interpretation of April now, regardless of what some stupid chuds on Twitter tell you otherwise. So yeah, that's my number three. I'm hyped as fuck. This could be the Spider-Verse for Ninja Turtles movies. My number three is Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 1. So for me, Mission Impossible is one of the most consistent action franchises out there. Uh, Mission Impossible Fallout, especially one of my favorite action movies ever. The idea that this movie could top that um, honestly makes me more hyped uh, than usual. This is a day one IMAX for me. And um, it's weird we haven't gotten a full trailer yet. I imagine it's going to be coming out very soon. And I don't even think uh, there is a plot synopsis yet. I might be wrong. But in any case, um, I'm still super hyped. I mean, I remember when I saw Avatar 2 in IMAX, they had a 10-minute uh, behind-the-scenes thing of how Tom Cruise was filming, uh, was doing one of his stunts for this upcoming Mission Impossible film. And he's known for doing all these crazy stunts, right? And I think... Um, you know, he, he keeps on surpassing himself when it comes to that. So I'm really excited to see what he does in this film, especially. And, of course, for the, the story and for the crazy action sequences. And, um, yeah, I can't really say what else, but I, I'm hyped. So that's my number three. Okay, so my number three is probably going to shock a few of y'all because, like, it's so low on here. But no matter how bad these movies get, I don't know why, but this franchise just keeps sticking with me like a sore thumb. And I just, I keep like seeing them and loving them. And my number three is Transformers Rise of the Beasts. Um, I absolutely just adore Bumblebee. I thought it was just everything a Transformers movie needed to be. And I, I'll be honest here. I love the first Transformers movie, my Michael Bay. Second one's the second one. Third one's really fun, in my opinion. It's it's not the greatest thing, but it's still fun. Fourth one, it's the fourth one, and the fifth one completely sucked. But somehow these movies, they just keep sticking with me. Like a drug? And I'm I'm super excited to see where this franchise is going to go, especially with... Um, Stephen Cable, Cable, Cable Jr. directing the director of Creed 2. Um, and you got Anthony Ramos in it and uh, Bumblebee. And I grew up on the Beast Wars part of Transformers, the Beast Wars cartoon, and I loved it as a kid. So I'm excited to see that get transform, trans, transformed <clears throat> transformed into live action, no pun intended. I'm, I'm just excited to see this movie so much. And it's also going to be my 30th IMAX movie. So that's going to be great. Um, so, yeah, Transformers, Rise of the Beast is my number three. My number three is Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse. Um, I really like the first Spider-Verse a lot. I thought it was a really creative movie, beautiful animation. I really love the characters in it. Uh, and this one looks like it's going to retain everything that worked about that first one and even expand on it. It looks really big, really ambitious. Um, again, I really love the animation. And yeah, it just looks like a really creative sequel, just like the first movie. And I'm really excited to see what they do with it. And as of right now, I believe I read uh, something that is going to be two hours and 20 minutes. So that, that's a pretty long animated movie we don't really ever get animated movies that long so that's also really cool uh so yeah i hope it's good okay everybody now we're gonna get into our number two boom boom and then boom boom <laughs> My number two is a movie that, of course, is going to be kicking off the summer movie season. It's a movie that's been getting so much talk. It's coming out this Friday. A majority of us will have already seen this movie by the time this video is edited and uploaded publicly here on this channel. 
but my number two is the movie Love Again. I know everyone has just been talking about how fantastic this movie was. <laughs> Finally! I absolutely can't wait. It feels like I've been waiting forever to see this movie. So, yeah, very hyped for Love Again. But, no, of course, in all seriousness, I'm joking. It's Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. What feels like a very, very long wait, especially with the situation that happened with James Gunn. But I'm glad he was able to go ahead, come into the studio, and direct Volume 3, which really is his baby. I'm a fan of the first two. I really enjoyed the first one. I liked the first one a lot. And Volume 2, I actually like more than the first one. I love Volume 2, but both movies in general are quality movies, in my opinion. These have definitely been some of the most unique characters that MCU has had to offer. The cinematography just like with the other movies, it's very colorful. It looks beautiful. The action looks exciting. But of course, most of all, the heart is what obviously is the driving force of this franchise. And I can't wait to see how James Gunn is going to handle the overall heart, the emotion. I hear this one is the darkest one. Uh, so we'll see how that's executed for me. I'm looking forward to the soundtrack as well as the soundtrack. Obviously, um, it really is a character of itself. Uh, with the first two movies. So I'm also just looking forward to the soundtrack and just seeing how everything is going to tie into a nice bow once we hit the ending of this. It's a movie I've just been just been thinking about a lot, you know, just like with a lot of these movies. Um, it's just one of those movies I'm so excited about that I can't stop thinking about it, and I definitely hope it delivers. And that is why Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 is my number two most anticipated for the summer. Alrighty, my number two. The, the the this top this top two has been so hard to figure out which one I'm more looking forward to. But as of now, I, I think I'm pretty confident in what it is. And my number two is Oppenheimer. I am a massive Christopher Nolan fan. I uh, when uh, I've I've been a big fan of his films ever since like I was like a very very little kid and watched like The Dark Knight when I was like seven years old and I should not have watched that movie when I was that young but um, I remember that was like the only movie I've ever watched twice in the same night um, and so like I you know it's just like I've had such a connection to it because of that as many people have with The Dark Knight but specifically uh, Dunkirk. Uh, that movie I really credit for like revitalizing my love of film because as a lot of you may remember, uh, back in like 2016, 2017, I kind of fell out of love of filmmaking and stuff like that. And the summer of 2017, I got back to like loving it so much. And uh, I, while I was getting back into it a lot, it was when I saw Dunkirk. Um, and I got to see Dunkirk in IMAX uh, like film, like the IMAX 70 millimeter print of it, uh, which was one of the most insane film experiences of my life. And that just really just brought so much just like joy to me about film and just experiencing on such a huge level. Um, and so like, I credit a lot to Nolan for my love of it. And every time he releases a film because of that, I'm so, so excited for it. And this one, just based on the trailers and stuff that we've seen and all this and that, I honestly feel like this has the chance to maybe be his best movie. Like, I watch these trailers, specifically the IMAX trailer for it, and I feel like the dialogue is just so, so sharp. I've always feel like Nolan has uh, better dialogue than people give him credit for, because I know it's, like, a main criticism of his. I've always really liked his dialogue, personally. Uh, but the dialogue in Oppenheimer's over looks such, so sharp and so poignant and just so many just, like, very, very just, like, emotionally heavy, just, like, like uh, like uh, uses of, like, emotion in them and stuff. It just, like, I, I really love the dialogue in it. And obviously, of course, like, every normal film, like, the scope of it, you know, with, like, the actors or just, like, the locations and just, like, the cinematography of it all, I just think looks just fantastic. Um, and, of course, this one is about a very, very, very heavy subject. Um, but I feel like the way that Nolan's going to go about it is in a way that, like, you as the viewer, you're going to be able to, like, understand, like, the situation, even if we obviously highly, highly disagree with what happened and the outcome of it. But I feel like as a filmmaker, like, when you're approaching a subject like this, when you're dealing with someone who is such a complicated figure that, like, you really have to, like, examine, like, why did they do what they did? And, like, even if, like, we obviously, like, do not at all condone any of what, like, ended up happening in, like, the history of what happened with this, it's still, like, making a movie, you have to look at it from their point of view. And plus, that makes them more horrifying also, I feel like. So I feel like Nolan's going to do that really, really well. 
And uh, I'm just really, really fascinated to see it. The cast is fantastic. And like I mentioned, another thing I, I said, I think it just looks like it could be his best movie. So I'm really, really excited. And that's why it's my number two. And I'm praying, praying I get to see it in an IMAX film, uh, just because that, that's one of the most like, that's like the best way to see a movie. So hopefully I can say it that way. So that's why it's my number two. All right. My number two is more like number three. Guardians of the Galaxy, Volume 3. And, yeah, it's been... It'll be six years to the day between Volume 2 and Volume 3. And, of course, in between then we got Infinity War and Endgame, plus the Love and Thunder appearance. But, yeah, like, behind the scenes there was that whole James Gunn shit that went down but yeah i'm glad that he's back to finish what he started i still need to watch the holiday special this looks like a very emotional conclusion for the characters as the guardians as we know them today james gunn is gonna do the dcu after this which i'm excited for because i really like the suicide squad so fingers crossed my number two is Tom Wood, play, wrong movie. Uh, my number two is my most anticipated action movie of the year. That is, of course, Mission Impossible, Dead Reckoning Part 1. I was a big fan of the last movie. Last movie is my favorite action movie of all time. I still find it really weird that there hasn't been a trailer like what Tony just said. We were discussing about it today. I, I don't know. We just haven't got one. I'm going to predict it's going to be with Fast X. Um, that's just a guess, maybe. Um, the scope of this movie looks insane. Like, I don't know how they're topping the stunts each time. Like, a train is going to crash. There's going to be a crazy car chase in Italy. And, uh, yeah, I can't confirm there's no plot synopsis as of right now. I still I have no idea what it's going to be about, but I'm pretty sure that's going to be a revealed in that trailer. Um, I love I love that Tom Cruise and Christopher Quarry are bringing uh, practical effects to the screen, like with Christopher Nolan. You know, they're bringing that movie magic, like with Top Gun recently as well. And yeah, I can't wait to see this movie. I've seen the last trailer so many times. I'm anxiously waiting for the next one. So yeah, that's uh, my number two, Mission Impossible Seven. My number two is. Um, Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse. I absolutely adored the first one. It is easily probably the best animated movie of the past decade, in my opinion. Um, That's the emoji movie. Yeah, bro. Oh, God damn, bro. Ugly dolls, anyone? Oh, no, that's terrible, too. God damn it. Uh, <laughs> now, now, Playmobil the movie. That's the true best anime movie of the last decade. Just what about what about Turkey Town? Fuck yeah! No, March of the Penguins. God, what the North of the North. Anyway, um, fuck, I lost my train of thought. God damn! It. <laughs> <laughs> the first one, uh, like I said, was one of. Probably my favorite of the past decade. Probably one of the best superhero movies and comic book movies in the past decade. I forget who mentioned it, but uh, they said this one looks like bigger and more epic. And I agree, and I can't wait. Um, I love like what we've gotten in the trailer so far, and I can't wait. It's going to be crazy. It's going to be wild. Um God damn it, Ugly Doll sucks. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Uh, I'm about to drop a big bomb for my number two, and it's a uh, robot starring Shane Lee Woodley. You know, I would love to own a Shane Lee Woodley robot. Wait. But no, in all seriousness, the real bomb I'm dropping is Oppenheimer. Um uh, I've been, I've been a, a pretty big Christopher Nolan fan, you know, ever since the Dark Knight trilogy. I remember first discovering him back in 2005 when I was like six. 
<laughs> and all of a sudden, like, it says from director Christopher Nolan comes Batman Begins. And I'm just like, who the fuck is that? I watched. I was blown away. I didn't get to see Batman Begins in theaters. But I did get to see The Dark Knight in theaters, you know, at, at a Las Vegas casino. And, and that was just an experience I'll never forget. There's like The Dark Knight Rises, which was an important time movie for me of that time. You know, a closing chapter. You know, I like Insomnia. Insomnia Interstellar. I have not seen Memento, actually. You know, I will get... I probably should get around to checking that out. Um, I haven't even seen Inception yet, even though I own it. I wasn't a fan of Dunkirk, but I did enjoy Tenet for what it was. So, therefore, I am hyped for Oppenheimer. I'm a big history buff, too, like history and all that. So, I'm very curious to see how he portrays a complicated monster in Oppenheimer, a man who is tasked to create something that would kill millions of people and how does that you know go into someone's head you know uh, in a way it's it's nolan's first horror movie in a way you know because of the subject matter and supposedly he there's no cgi just all practical effects so i'm just like did he actually build an actual fucking atom bomb or something like to actually blow up but you know i'm i'm hyped for i'm hyped for it yeah Hopefully it blows me away, uh, not literally. Wow. My number two is Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse. Um, the first one, Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse, is one of my favorite uh, superhero films of all time, one of the best animated films of the past 10 years. And the idea that this one could top its predecessor, I mean, that, that would just be incredible. I mean, the trailer is epic. I've seen the trailer a couple of times, um, especially on the IMAX screen, and I really think this movie is going to deliver. Um, it looks beautiful, not only in terms of its animation, but its storytelling, and I, I really have a strong feeling that it's not going to disappoint. Um, I know a lot of people already talked about this movie and pretty much said what I was going to say, but um, I I'm so excited. And at two-hour and 20-minute runtime, which I think, I'm not too sure if it's confirmed, but if that's true... Um, that that makes me more hyped. Um, I'm, I can't wait for it. So it's my number two. Okay, so my number two. Um, so last year, I wasn't able to join for this video, but if I was, my number one would have been Top Gun Maverick. Well, coincidentally, number two this year is another Tom Cruise movie. It's Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 1, which thanks to... Violet, I have a poster for. Right, right, right. you see. Based. It's, yeah, it's up. It's all right there next to Top Gun. Um, I'm very excited for this movie. I absolutely adored Fallout. I loved Road Nation. I loved Ghost Protocol. I really loved Three. Two is fine, and the first one is is fun too. Uh, this franchise just keeps getting better and better. Um. The direction, the cinematography, the score. I'm so excited to hear what Lauren Balfe has because the music he composed for the trailer is epic. And I'm, I'm just so excited to see this movie um, on the biggest IMAX screen I could possibly find. My number two is still a Michael J. Fox movie. I love Michael J. Fox as an actor. Um, you know, Back to the Future is my favorite movie of all time. Uh, Forget the show he's in. He was in like a show back in the 80s. Forget what it's called, but I've seen some episodes of it and I I like that show. I, I just can't think of what it's called right now. Um, but yeah, it's obviously really tragic what happened to the guy. Um, but you know, I, I like how, you know, hopeful he is and how positive he is and stuff still, even despite all that. And this looks like, you know, a really sad documentary, but also a really powerful one really feel good one at the same time it looks like it's going to bring all the feels uh i'm really excited for this a lot uh i think it's going to be really really good so yeah okay everyone now we're going to get into our number one what is everyone's number one oh, no. anticipate the summer let's see yeah 
I'm Batman. Boom. I would beat you off for right now, Ken. <laughs> I thought you were gonna cut it, but I'm Barbie. That's what I got. It. I got it. <laughs> so my number one, uh, you know, I'm not gonna try to hide it. It's obvious. Uh, it's Oppenheimer. Um, I think it's pretty obvious for the longest time, especially if you know me personally. That Oppenheimer, it was just always like guaranteed my number one most anticipated of the summer. I've known about this since pretty much last year that. It was going to be my number one of the summer and of the year. It's just in general, my most anticipated movie of the year. I am a big Christopher Nolan fan. He is personally, in my opinion, my favorite director working today. He is just one of those one of a kind directors, I feel, that gives you a different cinematic experience every time he has a new movie coming out. I love his approach to filmmaking, his storytelling. I completely agree with Violet. I don't think people give him enough credit as a writer. Um, I think he is a really, truly uh, gifted writer, especially in stuff like Interstellar, Inception, and uh, even Dunkirk, even though obviously it's mostly like um, a set piece, like kind of movie, um, even some of the dialogue, especially with the end of Dunkirk, I thought that was like beautiful. So yeah, I don't think he gets enough credit as a writer, but I think he's just as great of a writer as he is a director, you know, because of how practical he gets with this stuff. And it always just fascinates me. And it just kind of inspires me too. like what this guy is able to do just for the art of filmmaking. And Oppenheimer, obviously, it looks no different when it comes to that. Cinematography uh, looks just breathtaking. Like I'm absolutely blown away. Every time I watch the trailers, you know, I got to see the IMAX trailer thanks to Brian, which is really pulse pounding and intense. But I also really appreciate the first trailer. I love the music in the first trailer, like, so much. Like, I can't tell you how many times I watched that trailer especially because I just love the score in it so much, which is also going to be by Ludwig Gornson, who just previously did Tenet. I'm excited for him to come back to do this score. It really sounds like it's going to fit the environment of what he's telling. And of course, him tackling another uh, history movie following up to Dunkirk, his last history type of movie. That's very exciting to me. And I think the thing that I'm honestly the most excited for, to be honest, is Killian Murphy being the lead because he does not get to really be the lead like really that often at all in movies. So I'm just really excited that especially considering how many times he's collabed with Nolan, that he's going to be the front and center focus. So, you know, that's awesome. And, of course, I'm excited for Emily Blunt and Florence Pugh, Robert Downey Jr., um, Matt Damon. Um, you got Josh Peck even, which I think uh, is very interesting. There's not a lot about uh, Oppenheimer that I know about. I know about the basics of it um, and what he has done, but I don't really know, like, the full picture. So I'm looking forward to seeing Nolan translate the full picture of this man's story because he is a very complicated man. And obviously we've heard about how he's going to use an actual nuclear bomb to shoot that's bananas um like that is crazy um as long as no one was her on that set you know that's good i probably already said enough i needed to say but that's why it's my most anticipated movie of the summer and of the year um the more the days are counting down the more excited i just get for this movie and the fact that it's going to be a week after mission impossible as well it's just uh yeah it's very very exciting time for movies so that is my number one most anticipated movie of the summer Oppenheimer. All righty. My number one. This is one that I, I've definitely always been like interested in it, but I just feel like recently, just like the mood I've been in and just like what I'm really, really into that this is, I think the, the summer movie I really want to see the most. And that is Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse. Yes, yes. Um, so I love Into the Spider-Verse. I think it was one of the best films of 2018. I loved it. Um, and so this one, I, I've definitely always been interested in it, but I've been getting really into just like comic books and just like, you know, just like, you know, just emotional stories and the comic book like realm recently. And every time I see the trailer for these movies, especially that second trailer and even the, the recent trailer and the posters for it, there's just something about the aesthetic of it and just like the emotion and the grandness of it and the stakes that just, I, I just think looks so epic. And like, there's a rumor the runtime is going to be two hours and 20 minutes and just like, 
I just, I am so excited to see this. And um, something too, and I want to credit uh, uh, Jordan for this. Like, I really have been appreciating animation more. I've, I've always really appreciated animation, but just like the craftsmanship that goes into it, and just how hard it is, and just how like how much like perfectionist detail goes into it. And so, like, seeing something like this that has some of the craziest animation ever, and as I'm getting into comic books, just like how accurate it feels, like a comic book panels and stuff, and just like the little like pencil details, or whatever. I just think it's like absolutely incredible. Um, so this is my number one. Uh, Oppenheimer was really, really close, but I, I think honestly, I'm more excited for this one. Uh, so that's why it's my number one for the summer movie season. Woohoo! Hmm. A lot of movies coming out this summer, but only one can make it to the top spot. What could that be? Hmm. Let me put my thinking hat on to think about it. Oh, I know. My number one is Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse. spider Sweep. Yes. But yeah, I've been a huge Spider-Man fan since I was a kid. I Into the Spider-Verse was actually the first movie I saw in theaters by myself, so that was cool. And yeah, now this new one is coming out, and it looks as good as the into the spider-verse did it's been a few years but we're back baby we got miles morales gwen stacy and peter b parker back at it again and we have oscar isaac and daniel kaluuya as new spider folks and we have jason schwartzman as the villain here which i think he's gonna do a great job i love that man and we got, we don't have Nicolas Cage or John Mulaney, but can't have everything, I guess. But since Into the Spider-Verse, we've, of course, had No Way Home, which that's the big event we all know about. So who knows what that pesky spider boy from 199999 is doing. I'm excited for a little movie called A Quiet Place Part 2. It has Killian Murphy and... Oh, wait. Wrong movie. Um, uh, it's obvious. Um, HBO Max. All, yes. <laughs> uh, my number one is actually Oppenheimer. I Ooh. just made that joke because Killian Murphy and Emily Blunt were in that other movie. Um, I am going to be honest. I haven't been to an IMAX movie since 2021. And this is my big comeback movie. Um, I really miss it. I miss that big screen. I miss the speakers. And I think it's a guarantee this is going to be the loudest movie so far for I have to tell Dude Part 2 comes out because that thing's going to be loud. Like, it's going to blow out of your seat, boy. <laughs> uh, the scope <laughs> of this movie just looks like an old school 60s movie. Like something I would watch and find like on a uh, on terror climbing movie that gives me that vibe, and the thing about this movie that I'm just mostly like fascinated is that it looks like a thriller, it looks like a horror movie. And I think this next trailer, which is apparently coming out with Guardians three this weekend, um, I think it's gonna be the most intense trailer. Um, I enjoyed the announcement trailer. I enjoyed the first trailer we got. The IS trailer was just. Heart pounding. I can't imagine this next trailer. Um, I, I think it's a guarantee it'll be with Fast X as well, because it's Universal. And Chris Nolan loves the Fast franchise, by the way. So, <laughs> um, yeah, I feel like Barbie should have crossed over this movie, because we could have had a set piece in Barbie where a nuke blows up. <clears throat> you know, uh, when is the sequel? Uh, get the crossover movie going. But yeah, um, Oppenheimer, my number one. Can't wait to go back to an IMAX here uh, this summer. So yeah, my number one is Oppenheimer. Um, yes, a yeah. lot of people talked about it already. Uh, Nolan is goaded. Um, Gillian Murphy's a very underrated actor, in my opinion. I, I may, hope maybe uh, best actor. I don't know. We'll see. And. Uh, yeah, hopefully uh, this will be the year that, you know, Oppenheimer and Dune Part 2 duke it out with Best Picture, maybe. I don't know. 
I think it's very obvious what my number one is. Oppenheimer. Look, it's Batman. <laughs> oh, well. Oh. Nah. But yeah, I've been waiting for this movie since 2018. And I guess since 2019, because that's, I believe, was when the year they started pre production on Across the Spider Verse. Back then, when it was just known as Spider Verse 2. Uh, back when I visited Sony Pictures Animation, I got to vi meet all the people who worked on it. Not the directors, but no, the people who actually did the work. I'm talking about the people who revolutionized the animation style, actually crafted and built new technology to make that art style come to life. You know, It was a game changer. Spider-Verse did more than just... It transcended being an animated movie. It transcended being a comic book movie. Like a lot of people were putting it on their top five movies of the whole year and not even referred to it as an animated movie. You know, they were talking about like it was a movie, you know, like it was treated equal. I mean, Spider Verse was my favorite movie of 2018 that year. And meeting these people and the love and craft that they put and care they put into it and the fact that they heavily were thinking about not just uh how it looked but how it served the story and i feel like that's what i love about spider spider verse is that the animation served so much of the story visually i was there when they were presenting all their animation techniques and showcasing what work they did and they briefly talked about the sequel and how they were in early stages and they gave little nuggets of what could be you know so I was felt like I've been a part of that journey for years, just with seeing what they've been cooking. And so far from what we've seen, what they've been cooking is absolutely fucking delicious. It's a movie I feel like is going to impact the industry even more. I mean, you already feel Spider-Verse's influence in Puss in Boots, Michelle versus the Machines. Um, Wish. Wish. Yeah, Wish as... Disney actually got inspired by another studio and instead of being the influencer. Uh, Ninja Turtles, me and man, uh, you feel that influence. And like Arcane, you feel that influence. You know, it's, uh, I feel like it's going to be a movie that will <laughs> break, rec break records in terms of technique, technology, all the things. Like, like the possibility that it's going to be the longest animated movie in in America. Like, it's not the longest animated movie of all time. You know, that goes to an anime movie called Space Battleship Yamato, the final chapter, at 168 minutes. But the fact that in the States, it could be the possibly the longest animated movie in the States, you know, next to Ralph Baskey's Lord of the Rings. The fact that it's that level of ambitious that they're treating it like it's an, like a film and not a kids movie. It's honestly my most anticipated movie of the whole year. If you want me, it's not just my most anticipated comic book movie of the year. It's not just my most anticipated mo animated movie of the year. It's not just my most anticipated movie of the summer. It's honestly my most anticipated movie of the whole year, and that's my number one. And I'm so glad I didn't get interrupted by Goofy in Batman. Mm -hmm. So um, my number one is Oppenheimer. Christopher Nolan is my favorite director. It's a guarantee any movie he makes is going to be my number one most anticipated film of the year. But beyond that, um, I'm very fascinated by this. I don't really know anything about uh, this individual. Obviously, you know, he is a creator of the atomic bomb, but I don't really know anything else. And Killian Murphy, I got to say, he's been around for two decades and he's been a main actor in just a few films and in a show called Peaky Blinders, which is phenomenal. But even then, he still doesn't get the recognition he deserves. I don't know why he's so good in everything he's in. And um, I really hope that for this movie, uh, people, I guess, will finally, you know, he'll be getting more recognition than, you know, what he what he's gotten over the past two decades. But you have such a stacked cast. Um, I love the trailers. I mean, it looks so promising. And um, I'm sure it's going to be incredible. Like, I'm I'm counting down the day till July 20th so I can see it. Um, so Oppenheimer is my number one. Okay, my number one most anticipated movie of the summer is also my most anticipated movie of the year as well. 
It's 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 Oppenheimer. Uh, I I'm I'm a huge huge Nolan fan myself. I own every single movie. Interstellar and The Dark Knight are also in my top five favorite movies of all time. Um, I cannot express how much I love those movies to death. The black and white imagery looks insane. Um, when I went to go see the first Avatar in IMAX, they showed the teaser trailer. And it was legit one of the most beautiful things I've ever seen. And I literally paid to go see Avatar 2 in IMAX 3D just so I could watch the Oppenheimer IMAX trailer. Other than that, I just, I didn't, you know, I was like, screw it. I don't care. I'm going to pay $20 to see a trailer. I'm seeing this in IMAX. I'm going to try, try my best to find a theater that supports film IMAX, like 70 millimeter, and see it in that format because I'm just so excited. Cillian Mur- Killian Murphy deserves so much more recognition than he gets. And that, that cast is amazing. My number one is Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. Um, so yeah, uh, I loved the trailers for this movie a lot. I thought it had really great trailers. And um, I've actually seen the movie. Uh, I saw it, I saw it uh, <laughs> last night. And uh, it was a piece of shit. It honestly didn't live up to the hype at all. I really hated it a lot. So yeah, for sure. I'm just kidding. It was it was it was a great movie. I loved it so much. It definitely lived up to the hype. Um, it brought all the feels. It just it, it was wonderful. And yeah, I love the characters. I'm really gonna miss them. Um, it was a great final Guardians movie. And yeah, just beautiful. Okay, everyone, and that is that. It has come and gone. That was our top five most anticipated movies for summer 2023. Of course, thank you to all my guests, as always, for joining this. I did a little tweet on Twitter saying that if you want to shout in this video to comment your uh, top five right here. So let me do that very quick before I give everyone their little outros. So... So, yeah, of course, there's a tweet right there. Just figured I'd show that very quick. And then I have gotten a a few um, from Ross Johnstone, Joshua Drake, and Frederick Lopez. These are the gentlemen that gave me their top five anticipated for the summer. Thank you, gentlemen. Uh, Love all your lists right there. So there is your shout out. Thank you again for that. I got these Twitter replies after recording the video with my friends, but I still want to give a shout out to It's Spoonix or It's Spooks and Connor. Uh, thank you so much for your list. I love seeing the love for the movies you're really anticipating. So thank you again to them as well. And of course, if you all want to follow me very quick, I have TikTok, I have Instagram, I have Twitter, I have the book face. I'll leave links in the description down below. I have Letterbox as well if you want to follow my movie activity. And I have Serialized if you want to follow my TV activity. So I'm going to go ahead and let everyone give their outros one by one. Starting off with Violet. Yeah, Violet. Hello. Thank you again for having me on. I don't think I need to repeat that. I know I always say that all the time, but... And I really appreciate being on here with all of you people and, you know, especially, you know, you, Tony, for allowing me to come back, you know, for so many years now to do these videos. I really, really appreciate it. Um, only thing I'll plug is my YouTube channel. Uh, I'm not doing content on there currently, but I, I will be back there someday. So, uh, yeah, thank you for having me on and uh, here's to some movie season. Thank you, Henry. Where can the people find you? Thank you for having me once again. This has been a pleasure as always. You can find me on YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, Letterbox, Serialize, uh, pretty much everywhere. If you can follow me, I would appreciate that. And follow all these lovely people as well. I want all of you to get me out of this room. Please. <laughs> no, bitch. No, I want to get out of this room. I want to get out of the red room. Please. please that chair's your toilet now. <laughs> No, in all seriousness, <laughs> you can follow me on my uh, social media account, YouTube, TikTok, Serialize, Letterbox, Instagram, Twitter. Yeah. Also, get me out of here, please. 
Uh, uh, I don't follow me on social media. Before I give my outro, I am going to be nice and give these two their outro. So here you go. You can follow me at Disneyland where I'm... <laughs> no. Jesus. You can follow me everywhere. You can follow me on The Flash. You can follow me on Batgirl. Yes, the movie's not coming out. But trust me, all you have to do is break it Warner Brothers, steal the hard drive, and just post it on the internet. I don't know what the fuck the internet is because I'm so fucking old. I don't even know what the fuck I'm doing on these sets. So just do it. Just do it. Just follow me there. And you can follow me on my socials. Follow me on my new Twitter, Jordan MJ Farrell, because my other Twitter is currently privatized for reasons. You can follow me on my letterbox, serialized. You can subscribe to my YouTube channel and follow my Vimeo. Uh, my Vimeo, where you can check out my feature film, Scooby Doo the Backstage Rage. And you can follow my YouTube channel, where you can find my other films, such as Dark Ray Blue, Silent Fairy Tales The Wings of Love, and my most recent film, Muscle Man's Christmas Drive. And I do have some upcoming projects and shorts. Uh, in fact, I might have a little video to post. Uh, in fact, check out my uh, Vampires and Burgers video. You know, like, give that some love. Uh, thank you, Tony, for having me on this video. Um, I enjoyed, um, you know, doing this video with all of you guys. Um, and I'm excited for summer movie season. And I hope to be on for whatever is the next top five list on this channel. And um, yeah, you can follow me on Letterboxd, um, my Instagram page, Dago the Movie Man. I'm very active on there. Um, you, YouTube, even though I haven't posted there for a while. And um, I'm planning on having my TikTok page activated again. So, yeah. Thank you again, Tony. Thank you, uh, Timothy. You're very welcome. Thank you, Tony. I really appreciate being here. I'm so excited to be glad and be part of these top ten lists. I mean, top five lists. Um, <laughs> so you can follow me on Letterbox, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Tinder, Grinder, Only Farmers. <laughs> Where's uh, your OnlyFans, dude? OnlyFans, Fansly. Uh, <laughs> uh, You're a busy motherfucker. <laughs> Boys got to make money, man. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Got to showcase that Chamber of Secrets. You know it. No, nah, but seriously, though, I, I you can follow me on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and uh, Letterboxd. I don't actually have an OnlyFans yet. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> but, you know, uh, times are tough over here, man. Um, you can find me on Letterbox. Let me see what my I don't even remember what my username is. Hold on a second. <laughs> <laughs> um, my username is a haskell 20 um, you can follow me on youtube it's just adam haskell but i rarely ever upload and when i do it's just a shit post so i don't know if you're into that but yeah uh, so yeah that's pretty much it so everyone this is 22 tiger dude here with violet henry jordan andrew brian diego timothy and adam yeah he's present yeah and, and don't know. forget that all of us will always have <coughs> time I imagine